Tell you what, you want consistency in your color? You want continuity between, say, this device and a printer, or maybe InDesign or Adobe Photoshop so the colors match? We need to set up our color settings. Should be the first thing you do. Now, it's very easy to do, very straightforward. We'll go through all the options. You don't have to have anything open if you don't want to. However, if you want to open up this beautiful palette, it is in your working folder, 449 underscore 3701871 from our good friends at Photospin. Go up to the word Edit on the pull-down menu and go down to Color Settings, right there. Now, in Color Settings, these are the defaults, I've got North American General Purpose 2. If I click here, I've got newspaper, pre-press, web, internet. I've got a lot of different options here. I even have one here, actually three. This one, this one, and this one that I made. This one's for my inkjet printer. This one's my calibrated monitor color. And this one's one I use a lot for web profiling. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'm going to set it back here again. Now, your first question to me might be, Andy, I don't live in the United States. Well, I got you covered, okay? Or Adobe's got you covered. Click more options down here. Now go back up there again and you'll see Europe and Japan. So you kind of choose your, your country of origin or your location and then go from that point forward. Let me go ahead and just close that back down again. Less is more as they say. So let's say I like this one right here, but I want to make some changes. Like for example, here's my working spaces. We just have two, RGB and CMYK, monitors, paper, or additive and subtractive. sRGB is actually a good work horse color working system, but I'm beginning to make a change to Pro Photo RGB, especially if I'm working, say, with monitor work, web work, and even some ink jets. I like Pro Photo. It's a very solid, stable color system. So I'm going to change that. Now, when I do, this changes to custom. That's fine. Down here is CMYK. Now, my suggestion on which one of these you use would be determined by your press operator. Because if we're talking about CMYK here, we're talking about four color presses. They're going to know exactly what to choose here. So I would defer this to them. Okay, I check with them and see what they like or what they want you to use. Now down here, color management policies. What if I get an image that doesn't have an embedded profile of Profoto? What do I do? Well, if RGB, either preserve it, turn it off, or convert it. Now, I'm not going to convert to the working space until I'm sure it's needed. I defer to the intent of the person that designed it up front, and I'll decide to change that later. So I say preserve on that one. And I would do the same thing on CMYK, but that's up to you. Now, down here, what do you do? In other words, it's automatic right now. It's just going to do it. But if I say, well, ask me, ask me, and even on pasting, ask. If there's a problem, let me determine what I want to do at the moment I open the image. It's up to you. Okay, so we've made some changes here. Let's go up to the word save. Now you can see I have three sets already. There's my HP 8500A Pro. Notice the extension is CSF. You say, well, Andy, where did you get that? I got it from the HP site. You might be surprised how many profiles are available for printers directly from the sites and they're free. So if you can get one, why not? If you're going out to that printer, it's going to be your best bet on getting the best color. Now, if we save this one, I won't, because I already got one down here called Web Profiles. And it's the same thing as what we just did. Give it a name here. Make sure you save it in Settings. And then click Save. Now, when you do, the next time you need it, it would be in this list. And that's actually this one right here, Web Profile. If I want to go back to North American General Purpose, I can do that. Everything changes. The load button is what you use to get a profile. So you call your press operator up and you say, well, how do I set this up? And he says or she says, well, let me just send you the file. You go, excellent. And basically they send you the file. You click load, find it, boom, you now have it in this list. Now let's go ahead and click OK. Say we're happy with what we did. But you know what? We haven't synced the settings for anything else. What if you're using Illustrator in conjunction with Photoshop in conjunction with InDesign, which to me would be an excellent workflow for, say, going out to print? I'm doing my images, well, even Microsoft Word for text. I'm doing my images in Illustrator. I'm doing my photographic stuff in Photoshop. I'm doing the assembly of everything in InDesign. Believe it or not, 
you can have different settings for all of those and really mess up your color sync. What do you do? Not here. Let me show you something. We haven't talked about a program that you have, and that's Bridge. This button right here, and whether you know it or not, you have Bridge. If you click this button and it doesn't open Bridge, you need to go back and do a full load of Illustrator to get it in there. But here's Bridge. Now again, we haven't been here in this lesson series, but I only want to show you one thing. Go up to the board Edit on the pull-down menu and go down to Color Settings in Bridge. Now in Bridge, it's saying it's not synchronized. What do I do? Well, I'm going to go to my 8500A Pro. I'm going to be working in Illustrator, in Photoshop, and I'll be doing the final assembly in InDesign to that printer. All I got to do is click here and click Apply and every one of my Creative Suite applications will be synced to the same settings. Bridge is a fantastic organizational tool. Okay, it really is. But the other thing it can help you do is do things like set up your color sync settings for all your programs so you can get working fast.